Hello, everyone, and how are you all doing today? I hope that you're all doing very, very, very well, that you've had a lovely, lovely weekend and everything is going fabulous for you. For the last several months on my channel, we have been deep diving the Ekinkar cult. And I actually hit the mother load and got a whole Google Drive of everything to do with this cult. And so we have been deep diving Harold Clem. We've been deep diving Paul Twitchell. We've been talking about all of the belief systems and we have read through several of the books. And now today I would like to react to a time warp experience with Master Paul Twitchell, in which case a member of this cult claims to have had this amazing outer body soul travel experience involving Paul. And I think it's very important that we listen to what the people that join this cult and fully believe in everything have to say in order for us to get a full understanding of how manipulative this is, of the herd mentality here, of the group think here, of everything that's going on. So without further ado, I'm going to roll that intro and then I am going to be reacting to this lovely story. No, you and I. That love will overcome all things and yet love will not overcome. We start off with some music. Okay, so here it is called A Varden Cella's Time Warp Experience with Master Paul Twitchell. Because Paul Twitchell, he wasn't just a Mahanta or even the greatest Mahanta. Oh no. He was the sci fi author who created this religion. This very much started a lot like Scientology. In fact, Paul Twitchell joined Scientology and was close to L. Ron Hubbard before he went off and created this so-called religion. I think it's important for people to understand that in order to get a feel of why I think that this one's so dangerous. The imagery is important here. I'd like to share an experience I had when I was first starting my church. I had thought I had found what I was looking for, and I really had. One thing you will notice is that every single person that joins a religious cult like this or any other kind of cult, they seem to be looking for a sense of belonging, a sense of life purpose. They are always searching for something, and the cult always shows up to say, we have exactly what you are searching for. At one time it may have been, but it had changed. And I was coming back to where I live and had to stop for gas and I pulled in to the gas station and it was full except for one slot that was empty and I pulled in there and very very, well, very good a, that's uh, a, usually how that works you pull into the gas station when there's one slot empty you don't run over other cars in order to get a spot a anyway now I'm just being silly behind me was this gentleman driving a car from probably late 60s, early 70s. This could very possibly well be the exact car. I am unsure where these pictures came from. They do not tell us. And he was dressed kind of out of date, suit, hat, and that actually is Paul Twitchell. I can tell you that much. Perfect condition. And it was, I would say, it was So now that I've actually seen pictures of him, I am starting to think that this is actually a picture of his car. Probably the 
kind of our late 60s, early 70s. And what was so remarkable when I looked around, there were a lot of men at the gas station. And, you know, here's a classic car in many condition, and nobody was noticing. No one was paying any attention. And he was dressed the way I remember my now, hold on. Do you not find that a little odd? Like, if he was out of place and this car was out of place, why was nobody paying attention? Could that be because they were already aware with who he was and what he was about? I posted a short on my channel recently, in which case someone that spoke out about this cult actually talks about how they broke into his home. And I come back and the whole place is totally ransacked. I mean, bookshelves thrown over, beds up, tongue, everything's gone. So it's fair to say that people in this area may be a little bit scared of Paul when he pulls up, even if he looks a little weird, and may know better than to pay attention. That kind of thing is a red flag for me when I hear it. This girl just seemed to think he was also powerful, and that was why. And yeah, okay, maybe he was powerful, just not in a good way. You know, with a suit, a hat, and... The brim of the hat was, you know, how they changed. It was the size was worn back in the late 60s, early 70s. So it was a tie. And it was just like he was out of time, out of place. Out of his mind. So the funny thing is how much we focus in this story on what he looked like, what he was wearing, how he came off as being this like old soul, if you will. It's just very interesting to me that that is the main focus for like the first third of this whole story. It goes to show that they really do see him as a godlike figure. He did not really know how to use the gas pump. So he really wasn't pumping gas. He really, you know, he he didn't know how to use the modern gas pump. And I thought that was odd. But yet, it seemed right to me. I mean, this was an odd experience. But yet, it just seemed right. Does that make sense? He must have been a time traveler. I mean, that's what I would have thought, wouldn't you? Yeah. Hey, look, it's our friend the Eagle. I haven't seen him in a while. And I felt like this was this was a message. You know, something came through. I was almost like I was removed. It's almost like I had moved into another another time. So I moved into, like, a, a time warp. Let's do the time warp again. Right, I, I won't do the whole song, I promise. But again, this is apparently a true story. There were, like, two times we were here at the same time. I was in one, he was in the other, but yet we were in the same place. And... Yeah, it was being in different soul worlds, right? In different dimensions. I bet that's what we're going to be chalking that up to. No one noticed him. No one noticed him. This is what just blew my mind. Mm -hmm. He was filling his car, but he didn't have the pump action in the gas tank. And... I got out of the car. So wait, you you see this guy and he's dressed completely out of place with a car that's very, very old and he's not even using the gas pump correctly. And your first thought is this guy should be my leader, my master. Okay. You wonder why you're lost. And he was looking at me with made eye contact. The color of his eyes, as I remember, they were the blue. See, again, we are focused now on the color of his eyes. Like, we need to know that for the story. It's very strange how most of the story is just a description of him. There was more to it. There was a light that was coming from his eyes. It was the light of God! There was a light. There was a... This is probably a real picture of the light that came from his eyes. Not at all the sun. Just ask our flat earther friend Cece. <laughs> His whole, his whole countenance was one of light and love, gentleness, and his smile. Um, if I didn't know any better, I would say that she might have fallen in love with this man. He had was a smile that just made you feel warm and 
Yep, that's usually how you start a conversation up. Very good. Uh, I looked around and was noticing that we were having the conversation, and I thought, well, that's weird. Yeah. Um, and I asked him if he was okay. Um, and he said he was okay. Um, and I asked him if he was okay. Um, and he said he was okay. Um, and I asked him if he was okay. Um, and he said he was okay. Um, and I asked him if he I just had this feeling that he was there to share with me something because on the way I kept thinking about it and thinking about what I was looking for and I thought I was close, I wasn't. And he was so kind and there was such a light and love coming from him. So we shared a couple more words and I finished filling my car and Again, it's a very strange, strange story, and it's bizarre to hear, but again, it, bizarre, but not uncommon here for us to hear her hold him up on a pedestal like this, as if he's this godly being, and just one mere smile makes her whole life better, and she just automatically feels safe now, knows exactly what she's looking for. This man will show her the way. I am, I drove off. He was still standing there pretending like he was pumping the gas when I pulled away. <laughs> um, he didn't even help him out and like show him what to. Okay. <laughs> and as I drove off and I turned out of the filling station, I looked back and he was gone. Wait, what? I drove off and I turned out of the filling station, I looked back. And he was gone. And he was gone. Just like that, he just poof disappeared. Oh my God, he is magic. The car was gone. Everything was gone. Everything was gone. Even the car. What if he just got in it and drove away? Anyone else? He was gone. Poof. Absolutely gone. And I checked. That car wasn't anywhere. It wasn't out on the road. It wasn't so like, did you like drive by and check? I feel like it, you would only have been able to see this for one split second. Behind me, it was just. Odd. Very odd. And I knew then that that was a very special experience. And she was like, I saw an angel. I saw an angel, and I knew then it was a special experience. It's a very strange story. It took me a little while, and I realized that actually I had met Paul Twitchell. This here is Paul Twitchell. And this is a sketch of him, of course. And she is saying that she saw him and then he disappeared because to her, as a member of this cult, and apparently one of his students, as this is called Vanenkar's student's time warp experience with Master Paul J. Twitchell, she actually does believe that this man is a superior being or God. He was there encouraging me to continue seeking and that I was very close. You got all of that from him being at a gas pump and not knowing how to use it, giving you a smile and asking you how you are? A little bit of a stretch, but all right, sis. So, who is Paul Twitchell, his consciousness? Oh, God. Paul Twitchell was a pardon master. He has God consciousness. He is definitely a spiritual traveler. Now, again, remember, this is all stuff he made up. So he made up this religion and all these things that apparently occur and then told everyone that he was all of these things and then they believe him. A guide for many people into the higher world. Into hell. And what was meaningful to you that Paul Twitchell taught? Mm. The most meaningful thing was that our true self is soul. Our true selves is soul. It's almost like this is what they all say, like it's scripted. Our true selves is soul. That's the most important thing that he taught her. He didn't teach her how to love more. He didn't teach her how to accept others or serve our world in a better way. No, no, no. He just taught her that she is soul. And we are not our body. And we are destined to return to 
God. This cult is a great way to get body dysmorphia, by the way, because holy crap, you are basically told that your body is just a vessel for your soul to travel through different lifetimes in order for you to work up to be closer to God to then become a co-worker with God, which is what Ekinkar means. And become co-workers. And that probably resonated the most with me. It made sense. It felt right. It felt right that you are just disposing of bodies in different lifetimes to work your way up essentially a pyramid scheme closer to God. And in order to work your way up this, you need to do all the self-development courses and etc, right? And be a student of theirs. So it's it's all very sus, isn't it? Well, I hope it is when I lay it out like that. Well, you know, I think I also felt like I knew him but probably from a long, long time ago. See, and this is a manipulation tactic that this cult uses, is that they tell people that they have past lives and that they know them from their past lives. Like, oh yes, I was a guru of yours five lives ago, and because you've come and found me again in this life, now you must listen to me. It's a sign. Let me be your teacher. And it sounds like that kind of thing is what manipulated her into this. She was searching for something. He promised to give her the answers and promised to lead her on the rest of her journey. Getting closer to God, if you will. Yes, not in this lifetime. But there was a familiar... There was a sense of familiarity about... And that is why he uses old cars and old clothes, right? Because for some people, especially people that are a bit older, that would automatically give them a sense of familiarity. You see how that's a manipulation tactic? And this woman isn't a young spring chicken. She's a little bit older. So she was very familiar with the fact that those clothes and that car were from the 60s, probably when she was a kid. Growing up in that time, she recognizes that stuff. So right away, he would give her that false sense of familiarity just from her having good memories of being around cars like that, seeing men wearing clothes like that, and etc. So you can kind of see what manipulation took place here in order to hook her in. It's hard to hear. It's sad to watch happen, but I do think it's important that we hear it and that we kind of break down what is going on with people that become members of this thing and what keeps them here. His whole consciousness. And I think that's why I felt safe. It was like an old friend coming to point in the right direction again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, he just had to figure out how to use the, you know, gas pump first. <laughs> and, you know, it's like, well, I'll pay attention this time. So, yeah. See how she said that? I'll pay attention this time. So they tell them, you know, in the past you've been working towards this, but for whatever reason, obviously it didn't work out too well for you because here you are again. So now let's do it right this lifetime. And that's kind of what hooks them in. Like they don't want to go through another lifetime where they're wasting using their body as a vessel, right? You got to be working to get closer to God so that you can go and eventually live in this parent heaven. Uh, you know, when I read things, uh, like when I was reading the, the Sherry app, it's like, some of it just seems so familiar, you know, it was like... And the reason why a lot of it feels familiar, and we'll get into that, is that Paul Twitchell actually plagiarized every single one of his books from other books. But that's why people read these books and it sounds familiar, because it is. It's probably something you've read in the past, especially if you're someone that is searching and looking through theism to find answers. Just like it. It's something that I, I already knew, it was something familiar, mm -hmm. and it all made such sense. The only thing I've ever read that made sense. And I got home, and uh, I was maybe a few weeks later, I pulled up one of his books that I had on the shelf, and I turned it over, and of course his picture was on the back. And here we have this, um, The Secret Science of Soul Travel, and uh, this here is Paul Twitchell, you can see. Las Vegas, Nevada, where this was uh, created. You know, it seemed like our eyes met and his smile got a little bigger. And I thought, <laughs> it was you. It was you. I knew it was him. And that was a life-changing point. I mean, that kept me from getting discouraged. And it, when I went 
Okay, so here again is the God Heaven's Worlds of Bardenkar, right? Ekenkar. Mm -hmm. So here are a bunch of the worlds, and then you got a word, unspoken, right? You guys all are all very familiar with Hugh. Classical name we have, and we've gone through several of these, of course. There's the plane, the etheric plane, etc. You got the word associated, the classical name of it, and then there's always a sound. On Amazon was looking, I think that he literally guided me to find Bardak Park. No doubt. I had been on before, never came across it. So I think that it was like he was saying, okay, you're searching, you're, you haven't found it, so here it is. <laughs> you know, do with it what you will. <laughs> and I just knew, I just knew. And I have been so grateful ever since. I have been so grateful that I found it. I was so grateful to find it ever since. I was so grateful to find it ever since. Hard to hear someone get manipulated so badly to this way of thinking. I came across allergy books and bargain car. And I bought a couple of the books and I went on their website and I knew. I knew that was the place I had been seeking. It felt right. I knew it was the truth. And I did not hesitate to go ahead and join. And it has changed my life. I am, I am becoming who I am supposed to be. Yeah, so for those that aren't aware, Garden Car was the old Ethan Car. This religion being created in the mid-60s has gone through a few different changes. But no matter what, all you need to know is the basis of their belief system and that it was all created by Paul J. Twitchell, the sci-fi writer. <laughs> who I like to see as L. Ron Hubbard 2.0. Subtle. It hasn't always been easy. Patience. Hey, our friend the eagle again. I've been learning patience. I've been learning detachment. And that's not good, learning detachment. We don't need people to detach while they are taking part in a cult. It is easier, but I have a long way to go. But I will never forget that experience. Ma. You know, the, these are experiences that when you have... So it's funny that they talk about individualism during this part because, again, this is a cult. There isn't much individualism, especially when you tell people that their body is just some kind of vessel that they're using and that they're all soul. And that means they're all the same. The irony's fun here. Some of them, they seem so... They, they are real, but yet it was not in the right time and uh, that really that really moved me. Um, it's a beautiful experience. It, it was a beautiful Paul G's such a beautiful master. He's so sweet. Oh. <laughs> He's such a beautiful master. He's so sweet. The lady that's interviewing her is very, very into this cult as well. And it's, it again, it's it's scary to hear how they gush over him. No, and the, it's just, it literally flowed out of him. I felt at peace. I felt loved. He just radiated all of that. And, you know, I didn't, meet him when he was in his physical body, his timing was off, whatever. I this, uh, picture here might look very familiar to you because it might look like something that you saw when I was covering the Love Has Won Amy Carlson cult, which then turned to 5D dimensions and etc. There's a reason for that. Again, all of these cults are based off of each other and off of similar belief systems. I wasn't ready, but having that experience, I can't imagine meeting him in life would have been much different, you know? Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful how the masters love oh. love the Chilas so much. I, some of the Chilas have shared some experiences when they first found the path, and it just sort of blows me away, this love 
that the hero yeah. has and reaches down through the master. <laughs> reaches down through the master. It is very creepy to hear these women call him master. I, it is. It's so kind of neat. <laughs> yeah. That's not love, sweetheart. That's manipulation. And it's actually a very scary thing. Should be very scared of it and run away. Run away fast from this. Anyway, that is the end of this poor woman's story. I want you to tell me down below what you think about this and about the manipulation that took place and about everything I've said here. I do want to hear your thoughts and opinions on this and continue to let me know if you think I am wrong about this being a cult down below. I'd love to have you all come and yell at me about that. But in conclusion, I do think that we need to keep on diving into this. We need to deep dive Paul Twitchell's books and how he plagiarized most of his beliefs and writings here. And we need to talk about how we can stop people from being manipulated into this further and about a lot of worrisome behaviors that surrounds this cult. Oh, if you want to hear more about Ekinkar, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Give this video a like, share it around, spread the word that this is a cult. Someone you know could be singing you right now. So share it around. And no matter where you are, what you're doing, I hope that you all have a fabulous, fabulous day. Take care, and I'll see you all very, very soon. Mwah. Bye! And remember, don't join a fucking cult like this, okay? Be safe, damn it! Everything was gone. Everything was gone, even the car? What if he just got in it and drove away? Anyone else?